We are progressing very, very quickly with the D-Reg um, from CBU 18 right the way through into CBU um, 23. Uh -huh. So up where you can see Morgan Sindel's compound up there, um, the team have been working over the last kind of two or three weeks um, creating an access strip for us. So okay. when we start the main works, what we're planning on do is doing is installing hall roads along the top of the cliff to allow us to service the guys installing the netting and the netting. Okay. Um, so in total, there's probably um, around about 130, 140 metres of haul road or D veg to complete up the top of CBU 18. Yeah. Um, that's all completed now on the daytime works. Yeah. Um, so they're strimming everything off the top of the crest in the daytime um, and everything which is safe to do so, which, does, which hasn't got potential to fall onto the railway line. Yeah. And then everything else um, that is on the actual cliff face itself, they're doing in possessions. Okay. So this weekend on Saturday, we've got a large uh, blockade, which I talked about earlier, which we're doing platform works in. Yeah. We've also got a road rail plant um, on the tracks and we're doing D-Veg in uh, Corriton Cove. Okay. And we're doing all the cliffs down at that section. Yeah. Um, and we're also doing D-Veg in the section down the bottom here. Okay. Uh, so, so this this bit actually looks from here, from here looks like it's Corriton Cove, doesn't it? But this is Shell Cove, the next one along. It does look quite similar with the, the with tunnel there and... Um, and the breakwater. And the breakwater, yeah, yeah yes. but it's... Um, so we haven't done anything on the on the face on here yet. No. Uh, this, this is one of the last sections to complete. Okay. Um, so we're using uh, SAS rope and rail access. Yeah. They, they provide all of their own kind of rope access equipment. Um, they provide all of the specialist labour um, who are rope access trained and yeah. all the specialist labour to set and rig up the ropes to allow them to access onto the face of the cliff. Okay, and that's the company SAS, not the SAS. Yes, <laughs> the company <laughs> SAS, yeah. I think they're based out of, I think they're, well, the, the office we're based, that we're using at the moment to, to do the work from is Bristol. Okay. Um, so we'll have a little wander down into CBU 22 and 23, okay. um, where they're doing a bit of deep down here. Right, so this is Jack uh, from SAS. Um, he's one of our d -veg operatives working for SAS Rope and Rail Access. Um, Jack's just going to give us a little bit of a talk on what we're doing here in CBU 22 and 23 um, and how he's undertaking the work in the different sections. Okay, brilliant. So what we're doing at the moment is we're uh, clearing all the uh, trees and all the uh, debris and, and foliage that's all the way down the slope. So we're just making sure that it's nice and clear so when the netting team comes in, uh, they can stabilise everything and uh, they can work a lot easier. Um, rather than having to fight their way through all the trees. Um, as we've been working down the slopes, we've been using rope access techniques. Um, so we've been hanging off ropes um, in set ways as such um, to be able to make sure that our team and our operatives are safe. Um, and then going down and just felling trees into a safe area to make sure that we don't disrupt the, tra uh, the track um, and ensure that the trains can pass through it nice and, nice and easily. And then on the night shifts, we've been then uh, felling stuff where we've got possession of the track. So the section of the track is not being used for any, uh, any train use as such. It's just uh, machinery and plant that's moving up and down it. Um, but as you can see, we've uh, cleared a lot of this top area over before. It was sort of overgrown quite a lot. And uh, now we're sort of stacking it to one side still so people can get access down to the beach, um, but also uh, making sure that there's a safe walkway as such so we can get our teams in and out. Um, so in front of the guys doing uh, the D-Veg work, we're working with ADAS, um, who's our ecologist for this uh, contract, for Phase 4. Um, ADAS come in on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at the moment, and they, what they basically do is check for any wildlife in front of where the team are doing the D-Veg. The reason why we do it on Monday, Wednesday and Friday is because overnight birds can start moving into new nests or start creating new nests. So the ecologist just checks the areas, and if there is any nesting birds or if there is any wildlife which is in the way, we stop the D-Veg in that area. We cordon it off until the wildlife is then moved out of the area. Prior to starting these works as well, we had a phase one ecology survey done. And what that does is identify any non-native invasive species, so plants like Japanese knotweed, etc. Um, and we need to obviously manage the way we're cutting down that vegetation and controlling that because it's classed as a hazardous waste. So we'll have a little bit of a wander down and Jack can talk you through a bit more on what we're doing. So as we sort of come down the track, you can see sort of this section here that we've started uh, de-vegging and uh, felling large stem trees out. Um, as you can see, the track's quite close by, so we're just using uh, some of the trees on the sort of outer side closest to the track as a natural fence, just to make sure that if something does go down, it's not going to roll onto the track sides. Um, and then we've also just processing it as we go down the slope. And then we've got our team cutting up into smaller sections and then uh, just moving it down to track side so that we can be removed uh, on the blockade, which is uh, coming up this weekend. 
So we remove it with uh, an RRV, uh, which for those of you who don't know is a road rail vehicle. It's basically an excavator which goes on track. Um, okay. and we put two trailers on um, and then we load up with all the materials, which we'll have a look at down the bottom in a second. We load up with all the materials and then we take them back to our compound at Dawlish Warren and dispose of them from there. So we've got sections like this as well, the, where it's a large cluster of trees. So it's a bit more complicated to be able to just fill it out. So what we've done is we've left this uh, till we've got the possession or we've got the blockades um, so that we can do it safely and make sure that it doesn't disrupt any of the, uh, the track again. Um, but as we move down, you'll see that there's a hell of a lot of uh, timber that's come down already and some of it's already started to be uh, cleared and processed and uh, moved down to track side. So everything on the right hand side of the fence that you can see here we've, we've kind of put as an not as an exclusion zone as such but as a, as a possession working only zone um, so all of this section here hopefully will be completed this weekend so there's a team of two working in this area throughout the blockade for 48 hours this weekend and there's also a team of six working above Corriton Cove where they'll be undertaking the D veg above the tunnel portal on that side there so as you can see, this is this area here as we come down into sort of the, the bottom of uh, the cliff face as such. Um, I believe previously we've had uh, slips down here before where the, uh, the rock face as such has started to come away um, and it's obviously built up at the bottom. But with that, we've had a lot of timber that's, uh, and a lot of trees that are in, in here and we've now sort of removed the majority of everything uh, just to give ourselves some access and space. So as we fell in from the top of the, uh, the, top of the crest and uh, the top of the slopes so that it can almost fall down and come down into the valley where we can uh, process it a lot easier. If you just come round to this section nearly, we have to see a little bit better where, where they've kind of started felling the trees down through that gully section there. Oh, yeah. And then they log it, they, they slide everything down to the bottom, kind of bundle it up and then start processing it into the bag down at the bottom of the, the cliff here then. So in front of us, the, the kind of pile of material that you can see there is what's called talus, uh, which yeah. is basically a build up of the kind of washed off material off that cliff face there. So when the talus, or when you end up with large piles of talus like that, you can create an issue with slope stability because of the amount of additional weight on the actual slope itself. Um, so one of the, the design solution isn't finalised for this area at the moment. We're still working with the designer for different sections. So on the right hand side there, that's definitely going to be a nailed and netted solution at the top third and, and kind of bottom two thirds of that cliff section over there. Yeah. Um, whereas in this section, because we're so far away from the railway, the risk of things falling off the cliff and landing on the track is 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 it, it, there's no real risk really we're, we're, we're a good 30 40 meters away from that cliff face up there yeah. but it's just all of this build-up of material here so there's a design solution which we're looking at about potentially reducing the ground level in this area uh, by maybe a meter a meter and a, up to a meter and a half uh, but that's just going through the design check process process at the moment and also through the internal process of the network rail ram, ram team which is the root asset manager who basically once we complete the project the structure or the asset or the geotechnical solution gets handed back to. So you can see down this section here now where the guys have started kind of cutting everything and getting it, prepping everything up ready to um, remove over the weekend. Um, they bag it up into the material, into the, uh, the ton bags then. And then, um, sorry, train coming past. And then that goes back down to Dawlish Warren. Um, most of the timber we've been giving away at the moment to lo like locals and, okay. and, and stuff. Um, Brilliant. We probably reckon that there's probably between about 150, sorry, 100 to 150 tonnes worth of wood that will probably come out, but that's not including the brash piles and stuff as well. So there'll be a hell of a lot of, um, of waste material that's going to be coming out of here. Okay. Um, it's a very labour intense activity. Isn't it, it is massively. And, and I think the, the main thing for us is that we're trying to do it as, as simple as possible, but also as efficient as possible. So, you know, using the slope to our advantage and felling it down the slope. So it allows our teams not having to constantly climb up and down and then it makes it sort of a bit of a safer place to work from as such yeah. um, and when we are working on the slope then we're having to work off a of rope and harness um, and obviously all our guys are chainsaw um, operatives as well so it allows us to be able to have that flexibility of swapping in and swapping out and making sure that they're not using the chainsaw for too long and um, the, you know reduce the risk of white finger and halves and stuff like that. Brilliant well thanks for showing us around Jack. No worries at all. Thanks very much for watching again and thanks to Jack Brooks for another brilliant tour and we shall see you in the next video.